Right, hey guys and girls and people, uh, this is Bit from Cetrium Pass, and this is my 5 0 undefeated um, Fluandry's deck that I played in my OTS locals this weekend. Now, this deck is absolutely broken. Um, I genuinely don't know why people aren't making this deck. If you're a budget duelist, there's literally only a couple of cards in this deck are, that are expensive. The rest is so doable. The core itself is so cheap that I think if you haven't picked this up already, you should definitely do so. This is such an awesome deck, this format, I believe. I'm having so much fun playing it. And yeah, let's begin. So before we do this, um, please make sure you comment, like, subscribe to our channel, which helps us. We are small content creators, we love what we do. If you want to see content on a weekly basis, uh, do subscribe to our channel for Yu-Gi-Oh! and some other trading card games as well, but mostly centered on Yu-Gi-Oh! Without further ado, let's begin. Three, Rabina. You always want to play three, you don't want to play less than that. She is, or he is, or they are, your one card starter. They just get the uh, level four or lower. Eaglin, uh, the inverse of Rabina, that's level 7 or higher, same thing. And all the birds, if you don't know yet, they have the ability where if they leave the field, um, they have to leave face up and banished. 2 Stray or Stry, um, I think 2 is good. I know a lot of people play 1, I'm fine with 2. I want to have more birds in my hand, so I'm perfectly fine with 2. And the 1 Token, uh, Token doesn't come up that often, but when he does, he does uh, give you a lot of advantage. So let's have the three map, absolutely essential. You don't want to play this deck with any less than that. The three of the new card, the Advent of Adventure. Now this card is one of the reasons, I would say one of the main reasons that this deck is so crazy because people used to run Book of Moon. Um, and essentially what would happen is you get one of your small birds and they interrupt the small bird and then you have to have Book of Moon, flip your small bird face down so you still get the effect of the small bird which is what how people used to dodge uh, interruptions with this deck. Now, Advent of Adventure, for some reason, Konami has given them a card where you can banish either from your hand or face up on the field, and then you add a Fluandry's monster or a field spell from your deck to your hand. And then, for some reason, because they're so generous, you gain 500, and which is crazy. But you can recycle this card using Token and Stree, and it's a quick play. So that's even more amazing. So not only do you get, so essentially let's say that you summon Rubina and they activate some sort of effect and then you just chain the advent. Rubina gets banished, Rubina gets her, her search and then you also search off this, which is insane. But that's why this deck is amazing. I play one of the unexplored wins. This thing just tributes anything on the field. Any card sends it as a tribute. Just be careful. If you use this to summon Mega Riser, you don't get the last effect, which is to bounce something back to hand. Just be very careful. And um, a Fluandry's players, they don't even notice sometimes the ruling. But yeah, if you tribute summon something, uh, the Mega Riser using this, even if you use a winged beast or a wing type, it doesn't actually count. You don't get the third ability, which is to bounce something back into your hand and the Dreaming Town. Uh, Dreaming Town is absolutely amazing. You are allowed a normal summon uh, immediately after the effect resolves and then if you actually summon a level 7 or higher uh, monster while this is in the graveyard you can banish it and you can essentially book immune everything on your opponent's side of the field and because it banishes you can get it back with Toucan which is cool because that's how I think you should be playing this deck, you know, you should be playing this deck as a control slash mid-range deck. A lot of players are playing this as a, I'm going to swamp the board and put Barrow Statue on the board, which you can. That's perfectly fine. A lot of games this weekend ended because I had Barrow Statue on the field um, and they weren't able to out it. But, you know, I think if you want to play this deck, it's a really nice grindy slash control deck, uh, in my opinion, anyway. Play 2 M-Pen. I uh, don't ever need three. I don't want to have one um, because I recycle them and sometimes it just goes to a graveyard and if I don't have three, um, I can't really do anything with them. So I do like to have two. Most people think you're going to run a one anyway. So when the second one comes up, yeah, you know, it does sort of end games. Play the one Mist Valley Apex. Um, never really comes up for me, honestly. I summoned him once this weekend uh, and even then, you know, it wasn't that great. Um, 
of an interruption but um, I'm gonna keep testing and see how it goes one rise of the mega monarch this card is absolutely busted if I could afford another one I would probably cut out the avian and add the rise of monarch um, but yeah this card is going for a crazy amount of money at the moment I was really fortunate to get it for a little bit cheaper than what it is but yeah riser is definitely there and the barrier uh, barrier statue of the storm winds again amazing amazing card Okay, right. So, let's play the pot cards. I don't have pot of prosperity. I do have pot of extravagance. I'd prefer prosperity over extravagance, um, but prosperity is really expensive at the moment. And these guys, I got three of these for, I think, half of the price of one pot of prosperity. So I'm fine with this. Um, at the moment if I can trade into some prosperities that'd be amazing but the optimal version of this deck runs three prosperities this version runs three extravagance if you can afford prosperity all power to you I can only afford these and these work really well I never wanted to dig any deeper speaking of digging you have duality um, again the caveat with this deck is if you have prosperity and duality you can activate any of them at the same at any time in this deck, just make sure you're doing extravagance before duality. Um, just, just because if you do it the other way around, you won't be able to add any more cards to your hand. Okay, and let's look at the hand traps slash board breakers. Now in this deck, it struggles going second. So this is essentially me sort of trying to combat that problem so instead of having like a hundred hand traps in this deck what I've opted to go for is board breakers instead so I've got three dark ruler no mores again you don't want to deal with things and nowadays it takes more than one interruption to stop decks anyway you know normally before you'd have a draw a lock bird or a nibiru that sort of stops people in their tracks but you have decks like brave engine decks uh, vw d link dragon link they just you know, this is crazy how far they can just extend, even if you do interrupt them once or twice. So, Dark Wheel No More is my go-to card to break boards. Three dish D Shifter. This deck, this card is insane. Um, I drew it literally every single match. I drew it every single match, and every time I did, it was essentially just a turn skip. Like they couldn't do anything. It was a turn skip, and the worst thing is, I think I D Shifted this Virtual War guy like two times in the same match because I was able to remove this one with Stree and I had one in my hand anyway. So that was crazy. Just remember, if you're going to do a Dimension Shifter, uh, just be careful, you know, depending on which deck you use, you want them to commit to something and then activate D-Shifter so they can't really gamma you or anything like that. And then I play the two Ghost Bells, uh, sorry, Ghost Ogre. Uh, again, you want Ghost Ogre just because of Adventure Engine. I was playing Bells, that's why it came out of my mouth. Um, but I sort of just swapped them out for these. Two Ash, uh, one DD Crow because he's searchable, um, and the last card I play for consistency's sake is the Gold Sark. I have a love hate relationship with Gold Sark, but I think he's needed in this deck because essentially this is any bird. Um, if you've only got one bird in your hand, this Gold Sark becomes any other bird, so it's pretty cool to have. Okay, extra deck. Again, extra deck is the one thing that doesn't matter. You could do whatever you want in the extra deck. So I'm just going to show you the extra deck, I suppose. Akashic Musician, Topologic Tresbina, Borg God, 3 Chaos Goddess. Um, okay, just random cards. They don't matter. Um, I've got the Ferjit, the Baron Blossom, just in case, you know, Maximus. Never come against anyone that's used Maximus against me, so. Um, that's not ever used. Same idea between, same idea with the ominous omen. You always want to have one bird out to chain block your opponent. So you know if they maximus you and you get rid of this, you, you sort of search for a bird. Uh, Entis maximum tar uh, maximus target. Sorry. Um, same thing with um, Omega maximus target. And the one thing I do keep is the Nightingale plus Zeus. Um, I'm looking for a downward magician, so I could sort of swap one of these out for downward, but it's not a big deal, honestly. Like this deck, you don't need your, you don't need your extra deck for anything, because you never special something. 
and a lot of people say that Zeus comes up. Honestly, I've never had the chance or the opportunity to summon Zeus. Um, just because, you know, games usually end before you, you're thinking about bringing Zeus to the board. But yeah, that's the extra deck. Okay, my side deck, Lancia. This does kind of mess with you as well. Um, but at the same time, you know, against PKs, it kind of, you know, they've got to pass their turn. They just end up on a suboptimal board. So it does help. I've never sided this in this weekend. I uh, never needed it, to be honest. But this guy, I sided him pretty much every game. Um, you know, he's essential. He's essential enough to be sided every game, but not to be used in your main deck. So I'm not entirely sure why. I just don't feel comfortable having him in my hand in the main deck. So, um... That's the reasoning behind it, but yeah, amazing card. Um, again, Raigeki's. I'm forcing on board breakers. I've always sided this in, and every time I had Dark Ruler and Raigeki, and your board just goes. Ideally, I'd like some Lightning Storm, but again, that's a stupid, crazy card, and uh, this is fine for now. Uh, my locals is full of uh, amazing Old Lich players, so Red Reboot. I play the one tank. You just make sure you don't summon Pang and then do the Apart Duality um, just on, on the turn because you're not allowed to special summon. I've made that mistake before but you know it was good that we saw rectify the problem. Uh, play one call by, never ever sided it in. Two Twisters, sided these guys in, just a back row and this Dark Simorg. Now I played against an Eldritch player and I sided in Dark Simorg and I went first because I lost the first game and this card literally both games I summoned him on the first turn and on my first turn sorry and he just ended the game because it's a 2700 beat stick on top of that and also you just can't set anything it's ridiculously insane um, but yeah he just didn't have an out for it which is ridiculous because we spoke after the match and he was like I've never even heard of this card before and he had to read it a couple of times just to make sure that what he was reading was absolutely correct all right guys I hope you enjoyed that uh, deck profile again this deck went undefeated uh, it wasn't a massive locals you know it was a small one where people were testing there were some suboptimal decks i saw going around um but yeah you know robina the fluandries package is really good this format and um, so you know if you haven't already do give it a try and uh, this is bit from set three and pass and uh, to be continued guys